Guys, welcome back to another Harami episode. Um, I've got a special guest on me today. I've got David from Portugal, Lisbon. Um, he's a huge Benfica fan. Um, and he knows the history of Benfica. And the moment Ruben Amorim... I've known David for quite a while as well. A few months, six, seven months and stuff. Been on, on obviously, regular contact and stuff. Uh, and the moment I basically heard of Ruben Amorim, I was like, David... We got to do a pod because you need to tell these our audience um about Ruben and Morim. Um but first of all, welcome on the pod. David, how are you doing? You okay? Very well, and you? How I'm good, you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I mean Thank you for for remember me. <laughs> no, no, I know. We were supposed to be on about uh about half an hour ago, but obviously you sorry about that. You've yeah, been busy, sure. but it's good, it's good, it's good. I mean, Ruben and Morim. Let's go into it, because uh, I know obviously I've got less time, you've got less time as well. He's actually from Benfica, isn't he? Like, from the playing days, the youth days. Tell us about our next manager. Yeah, so he, he actually he, he's, he's a Benfica f- a supporter. When, uh, yeah. he, when, he, when he entered the Benfica, when he, he was presented as a, 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 the new footballer of Benfica, like 15 years ago, something like that, uh, probably a bit more than that. Uh, he, he, wa- he, he showed his uh, cards because you can be a member of Benfica. I'm a member. Benfica has almost 400,000 members and he was one of them. Uh, so it, it was a special guy for us when he, he was presented as our new footballer. He, mm-hmm. he passed by Benfica youth system uh, before that, but he went then to Bolnes, which is a another club in Lisbon. Some is a bit more historic club nowadays. Not not having the best days, they are playing the third yeah. division. Yeah. Uh, he went to Bolnes, and then he he came to Benfica, and and uh, for us was really special to have a, a guy that is also a member of the club that uh, now plays in our in our main squad. And uh, he, he spent there, he was here for four or five years. Uh, and then the things just didn't, uh, the, and then he decided to, to, to move to Braga. He was loaned to Braga, uh, also in the middle. Uh, but, and, and then it was a bit of a surprise when he, he ended his career 31 years old. And uh, in three years, Within two years, we understood. We, we understood why he went to. He became a coach, and he was. There a reason, he was, was there a reason why he ended his career early to go into coaching? I, I mean, he never spoke about it, but it mm. seems like it because he, he started to be. He started. He became a coach at 33, 34 years old. Mm. And uh, he, he, at that age, he could be he could be playing. He also had some injuries in the end of his career. But mm. I mean, he, he was thirty years old; he could still play at a good level. Yeah. So I would imagine that uh, it had uh, some influence. Um, he, he went to Casa Pia, who, who, which is a club that right now plays in the, the first division. But in that time, he, they were playing in the third division. So this was more and, uh, his, his managerial career now, right? So he went to Casa Casa Pia in 2018, uh, exactly. in, a, in a managing role, yeah. In a ma- manager role, but it, it had a caveat because at that time the, he didn't have the the football degree. I, I'm not sure what is the word in, in English. Uh, in Portuguese, is the pro license. Yeah, he, pro he didn't have the pro license, uh, and. Um, so he had to he had to to renounce the the spot the, the his place uh, in the middle of the season. Casapia ended up uh, going to the second division, and uh, later two years after they they managed to be in the first division where they are right now playing. Mm. But um, they they ended they they actually won that that season. He wasn't he wasn't lo- no longer there. He was he, he had to to resign. Um, in that summer, every newspaper was saying that he was he he, he was to come he was to come to you yeah you ah he was about to sign the, with Benfica for the U twenty three team, 
Mm. He, he was supposed to sign with Benfica on that year. But uh, when everything was closed, Braga appeared and they decided to offer him the second team of Braga, which mm. uh, on the time was playing on the third division also. Mm. And uh, uh, from that, from that, in six months, he, he, he started to, in Braga in 2019, I, I believe, something like that, Braga's second team. And in, within six months, he went to, from Braga to Sporting, from third division to the, one of the top three clubs in Portugal, which was a, a, a really fast, uh, really fast uh, growth for, for his career. Mm. You know, throughout his, his uh, managerial career, though, has he always, you know, his style of play, has he always been the 3-4-3 three, three that he's done? Or has he in, Braga, in Braga and also in Sporting, he always played with that 3-4-3. Three, three. Mm. Uh, and uh, with huge success. So Braga, they they, they, they resigned their coach, they uh, fired their coach in, in December. Uh, in December 2019, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he became the coach of Braga in December. By January or by February, he was the coach of Sporting. Sporting mm. in that time was in a really crappy situation. Yeah. He was the fourth coach of uh, Sporting on that season. Uh, and you can imagine all a club, all a club that is a top three club in in, in a country. Portugal is 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 not exactly like Spain or or, or England, but yeah, uh, 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 is a top six, top seven league. Uh, uh, so, they, so, so David, you know the time where Sporting Lisbon were performing, and he he came into um, as a head coach himself. You know, Sporting Lisbon itself, would you say it was more of an ownership kind of issue or management or like kind of something like that, that he basically changed himself, or was it...? No, the, the sporting situation was just uh, everything went bad. They, they had huge financial problems. Mm. In 2018, in 2018 uh, around 40 uh, supporters of sporting entered the, the academy and started to fight with some players. Mm. The majority of the bigger names of sporting left the, left the club. Uh, they, they they left the club for really small fees, uh, like Rui Patricio went to Roma. Uh, perhaps I think he was he first he went to Wolver, Wolverhampton and then he went to Roma. Um, William Carvalho went to Betis. Rafael Leão went to Lille. The majority of the players left left the club, and uh, that's what um, Ruben Amorim found. He found a club that didn't have. The, the main stars of the club of the club uh, have left. The, the only one that didn't left was uh, Bruno Fernandes, who mm. actually left uh, one month before he arrived. Mm. So when Fernandes, uh, Bruno Fernandes wasn't uh, didn't leave the club after the the academy invasion situation. He left the club one year and something after, uh, but before Ruben Amorim arrived. Yeah, uh, he went to Man United, uh, as you all know. Um, yeah. yeah, so Sporting was in a really, really bad situation. But uh, on the other side, they 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 didn't have they he, he had basically a payroll to to fill, and mm -hmm. I will say that that's one of the things that it, it wasn't him alone, but uh, yeah. but uh, he's he and the team that they were able to create around him did a really good job. Mm. And within uh, within uh, one year, he, he was he was a, a national champion. The next year, and it was the first time that Sporting won the the national championship in almost twenty years. Which, as you can imagine, yeah, is uh, is quite an accomplishment. Uh, so the, you... go on, carry on, carry on, David. No, uh, as you the. Because uh, I, I mean, I, I see a lot of Man United fans comparing Eric Tenag with Ruben yeah. Amorim. That's what I want to come into. Is that a comparison there or isn't there? I mean, I think I think I I really I remember the season that Eric Tenag did with uh, 
with Ajax. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Benfica actually played against uh, Ajax the next year and uh, and they had a really good team. They they played really well and they worked really well with uh, with their academy. Mm. I'm not sure exact. I don't follow that much Man United to know what went bad, but from the from the outside perspective, it seems that uh, uh, Ten Hag had some personality conflicts with with all those players with some of those play, of your players. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think with Ruben Amor, I, I I I see the why people compare them because. They they were really good in in some minor uh, minor league, but uh, and and I think there are some red flags with Ruben Emery. Actually, I I, I I see one or two red flags. But in terms of personality, I think you won't have any problems. He's a he's a player's coach. Uh, he, he was a player, so he knows everything that uh, everything that the all yeah. the, the guys pass by. Mm. He knows, he understands the players. Uh, at least it's from my perspective. Uh, as a, Bif- I, as a Bif- I'm a Benfica fan, so I I, mm. I can't can't give you much more. Yeah, 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 yeah. You but, know the uh, red flags you mentioned. The red flags you mentioned in Ruben Amorim. Um, what are the one or two red flags in him? Uh, so, as, for, as United fans, we would love to know this, uh, and then we'll go yeah, into yeah, the positives. Uh, so for me, the main red, his main red flag um, is he, he was a national championship. He was a national champion with uh, with Sporting twice in four years, mm. but in the first year he didn't manage to qualify to to Euro- European competitions. Okay. So he was playing basically seven uh, one game every every seven other days. Mm. So he had six seven six seven five days to prepare each game. And that's why Sporting was so good. They, they, their players were all is rested, and uh, they didn't have a really huge squad because, as I said, the majority of the big names of the club left uh, two two years before because of the, yeah. the, the academy invasion. Mm. And uh, but so he had a lot of time to prepare each game, and uh, that helped him a lot. Mm. The the the. The last season, he was he was also a, sh- a, a, a national champion, mm-hmm. but on that season um, they didn't win, they didn't go to Champions League. Yeah, they only played the Europa League and they played with the uh, Strumgras and uh, another Polish Polish team. The only games, the only big names that they, they did was against At- Atalanta, mm-hmm. uh, and they they lost against Atalanta. Mm. Um, so I would say that's that's some red flag. So he, he never had to play in a he never had great success in a, in a club that plays every two every three days. Yeah. And um, but also he never had a, a squad that is as the depth that uh, Man United has. Mm. So he, he was playing. If you see the 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 if you see the squad of Sporting, yeah. they have uh, they the, you can see the big names, but then after the the fourteenth the fifteenth guy, uh, is not that big, is not that good. Uh, but th- there is also a difference that this season they had a bit more money to spend, and uh, their their squad this season is a bit more as a bit more depth. So you, if you want to see the depth and the, the situation of uh, uh, of uh, the amount of days that they had to prepare each game, uh, I I wouldn't use this season. I would use the 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 last, the, season. The, the, the last season and the season the the oh. season of 20, 2020. Mm. Um, because uh, those were the seasons that they didn't have as much depth in their squad. This season is they are a bit better. And if you see the Champions League, they have seven points out of nine, mm. and in the in the the Championship, they have in Primera Liga, they have uh, nine 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 victories in nine matches, and the, it's not only nine victories in nine matches; it's nine victories where they always win with uh, uh, with really re- uh, they always win uh, by. Good margins. They have 30 goals scored, and they only uh, considered two goals. 
Um, and that's, I think, is doing a really good job. I, I think he turned it around the club that was in a really crappy situation uh, with financial problems, with players leaving, with uh, the, the, the academy. Portugal won the Euros in 2016 and the majority of the players on that team came from Sporting Academy. Wow. But since then, not yeah. uh, since then, if you see the majority of the players that are coming and appearing in foot in the Portuguese football scene, mm. the majority are from Benfica, and uh, I, in some cases, Porto even passes uh, passes Sporting. Mm. Uh, but he turned around also the academy, and uh, you go if you see Nun Mendes who is playing with the left peg of PSG, is from Sporting. Jean Palinha, yeah. yeah, yeah. is right now in Bayern, Bayern Munich. Munich. Yeah, Munich. He, his career just turned around uh, with the Mourinho. Uh, Ugart, uh, they found Ugart. Ugart was already new in the Port in the Portuguese Liga, but um, he went to PSG now Manchester United. Yeah, Ugart, uh, yeah. and uh, I think he's going to fit really well in, if mm. if uh, Mourinho mm. in the in, uh, in this going to if mm. Mourinho goes to go, goes to United, I think Ugart is gonna mm. is gonna have a really important role because if you also see. When he was a coach in in Braga, he carried yeah. some players from Braga to Sporting, mm -hmm. and I would expect that he, he does he does the same thing uh, now. Yeah, of yeah. course, Man United, Man United is a really good squad. I think there are a few players that I I think will fit really good in. in, in I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. So, which of the Man United players will benefit a lot from Ruben and Roman's style of play? Uh, I, I. From uh, from the back, I will say Lisandro, Lisandro Martin. Mm -hmm. He's gonna fit really well. Mm. I think the the Diogo Dalo can be the 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 right uh, uh, the right uh, def central defender. So he is defenders. The the guy on the right can be Diogo Dalo. I would imagine he is he can do something like that because he did the same thing on the left side, yeah. uh, supporting the, the 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 guy that plays. No, nowadays he doesn't, doesn't play as much, but the last two years, Matheus Reis, he was a left back by origin and mm. started to play as a center back on the left side. And uh, I I see Diogo Dalot can, 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 can do the same thing on the on the right side. Mm. Uh, Ugarto, obviously, I think Rashford fits really well in his system. Uh, Garnache, who also fits really well in his system. I the, the guy that I actually have more more I I am uh, of course he's gonna play but uh, the, I, I I can't I can't see exactly where he's gonna play is uh, mm. Bruno Fernandes uh, I know I'm not sure if he's gonna play next to Lugard or play in, in the on the on the on the on the front um is is not really obvious for me where 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 Bruno Fernandes can can play. Yeah, uh, but uh, Lisandro, uh, Ugart, uh, Rashford, I think they all fit really well in in his ideas, mm. and, and there's also um, his system is really complex, uh, not not complex to play, but complex to to defend against. Yeah, because. Mm. Uh, so Sporting has a really good striker, has a really good striker, uh, Gyokeres. Gyokeres, yeah. and he uh, came from Championship, isn't he? Championship, yeah. He, he, he came from Comforty, mm. and he is a, he, he played, last season he scored 43 goals. So, can you 40. see something similar with him? What Amoran have done with him? Do you think, can you see something similar with Manchester United Rasmus Highland? Uh, yeah, I think it's the same idea because they are both really big, really strong. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Gyokeres, Gyokeres, when whenever he is not the most technical guy, but when he receives the ball, he he's so strong that no one can really uh, take the ball from him. Mm. And uh, I think the 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 idea is the same. I I, I see many Portuguese fans saying that uh, he's going to take uh, Gyokeres with him. I don't see it happening because they they all Man United already has their already has a Yolman. Uh, yeah, uh, we've got two strikers. We've got Rasmus Hoyland and we've got Zerski. 
who can play up front as well. Yeah, Zirksi, actually, I think he he can play, but uh, on one of the other positions. I think he's a more mobile guy. And um, if you see Sporting's games from last season, they yeah. all they played many games with uh, uh, so their their second striker, uh, the striker number two, not the second striker. Uh, striker number two was Paulinho, who is now playing in Mexico and is playing really well, and he scored twenty goals last season. Yeah. Um, I, I see ZXZ doing the same role that Paulinho had last season with with him. Okay. I, I think he fits better there. Um, because, uh, yeah, but I was saying that uh, the, the system is, is complex to defend because if you, uh, Gokeres was, is the main star. So he, the defense tends to, uh, to give some special attention to Gokeres. But yeah. uh, when you, cons- when you go too much to Gokeres, uh, which is the, the only way to defend him, uh, not the only way, but uh, the main way to defend him. Uh, you always create some spaces somewhere, and the, there will be somewhere. The, there, there will be someone somewhere uh, getting, uh, enjoying, and profiting from all those, all those, all that space. And um, so uh, that's why I am. Uh, when I say that it's a complex, it's very complex to defend because they always manage to create some space, and it seems so easy when you are watching, but. It's not, mm. it's not really easy to replicate. Mm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you want to see more of uh, the games that uh, he, his system didn't go great, I will recommend to watch the, the games last against... Season. Yeah, last season, yeah. Atalanta, mm. Atalanta uh, was using... Um, I'm not sure how you say it in, uh, in English, but the man-to-man coverage. Mm. They... They were doing uh, the entire match, the entire field, man-to-man coverage, and uh, he, he never, the, his team never had the, a really great idea to to pass it. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, they just smash everyone and in the, in the Portuguese Liga. Mm. I was gonna um, b- before they let you go. Uh, I spoke to um, some people from from Benfica itself, so some executives. I was in Pakistan, obviously Benfica were invited to uh, the, the, the the PFL. You've probably seen it on my profile on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Actually, that's and, when we started to, sp- to speak. Was, yeah, uh, speak, yeah, I it. know. And I, I basically messaged, obviously, David as well. And I mentioned, obviously, what can you tell me about uh, Ruben Amorim? And he said to me straight, he said to me that you're going to get a really special coach. A special coach. Because he even said to us back in June that... In, in hindsight, Sporting Lisbon snatched Ruben Morin from Benfica in a way. Because yeah, he's a that, special that's coach actually true. And he's the, next, he, he's the next best thing basically coming out of Portugal. Um, but David, no, I, I appreciate your time. I, I know you, you're against time. I'm against time as well. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to end the call here. Uh, I, do, I do appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, we can do this again uh, in the next few months. Once I'm running, comes into Manchester United and stuff. Um, any, any message you want us to send to the United fans on our audience? Please take him. <laughs> take him. <laughs> I'm, tired, I'm tired of this guy. <laughs> I actually <laughs> like him because he's a Benfica. He, he's a Benfica play. He was a Benfica player. He, mm. He's a Benfica supporter. Yeah. I like him. I'm tired of seeing on the, those colors. Yeah. He, he needs to be in red. Red suits him well. Well, mm. and. Um, I, I have to say one thing also, sorry. Yeah, no, Which, no, go on. Uh, yeah. Liverpool, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, they, the three clubs, they have really, really good projects and really good organizations. Mm. And and it's not easy to, to, to beat those teams, so it's mm. going to take time. Time was something that he had in sporting because yeah. he, he, he won really early. Um, and uh, so they they gave him the, all the time that he had uh, that he he wanted. Uh, the, so he was a champion in this uh, basically his first season, his first complete season. 
but then he, he didn't he didn't have the the next two years weren't that great mainly the third year was really crappy actually but they they also mm -hmm. sold three of the their main players uh, so yeah. they they ended up in fourth or third also mm -hmm. uh but um it is it's not easy to beat those teams I, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I think with the Tenag, you weren't near it to, to yeah, near we the, the level of yeah. those teams. Mm. But uh, it's not going to be easy to for him to to arrive and be at that level. You have to have some patience. Mm. Um, and and uh, I think with time, he's going to be a really good coach for United. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, for anyone, not, not either if it's Mourinho or another another guy, is not going to be easy. But uh, I hopefully it, it turns around because mm. United yeah. was always United for the Portuguese lads like me when we were that uh, when we w guys that were born in the nineties. United yeah. was always uh, the English number one team in Portugal because of Ronaldo, mm. of course. Mm. And uh, we all grew up with uh, Ferguson and Vanessa Roy and. And Ryan Giggs and Paul mm. Scholes, we yeah. spent all this the afternoons watching those guys. Uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully it turns around for you. Yeah, thank you very much, David. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, and I'll, I'll drop a message after this as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Take oh, sure, care. no worries. Bye. Take, care. Take, take, care. take care.